So that concludes our course in the violent universe. We've gone from the very moderately violent things like white dwarfs up to through supernovae to black holes and the most violent things of all. But is the subject finished? Have we now discovered every violent thing in the universe? What do you think, Brian? Well, it's a very big universe, Paul. And so clearly by looking around, we've found some violent things that are pretty common. But there's a whole new generation of telescopes uh, that are coming along that are able to look at the universe and look for violent things that are very rare. Now, it might be that these new telescopes will find these rare, huge cataclysms that we just don't get a chance to see very often. I don't even, I can't even imagine what the universe might dream up for us. Or it could be that there are certain cataclysms that happen in the very early universe and we're just not able to see yet and the next generation of huge telescopes might be able to uh, find new things by being able to just look further and further away. What's really amazing about these violent events in the universe is they tend to make the things that make up the universe. For example, all the stuff you and I are made up of or made up in violent events in the universe. But they also give us a chance to really push physics to its limit so we can really see if we can break the fundamental laws of physics. And that's an exciting thing because if we can break things, then we can fix them. And by fixing things, we can predict new things uh, and perhaps even make new things from those new predictions. Yeah, this is a big difference between students and professionals. A student, they do an experiment, doesn't work. They see that as a disaster. Oh, my experiment hasn't worked. I'm going to get bad marks. Whereas us, if we do an experiment and it's a good experiment and it doesn't work, that's taught us something really interesting. That's exciting. Now, that's how you win, up no win Nobel Prizes is by uh, getting the wrong answer in your homework. Okay, so... Um, another way in which we might learn something really interesting would, of course, be gravity waves. Uh, do you think we're actually going to be picking up gravity waves from these things? Well, I think there's a very good chance. We have the new LIGO uh, detectors coming online next year, and here in Australia and indeed around the world, we're all set up to look if they see anything, and we have a chance to start seeing things in the next year. And, and our best calculations are that the merger of neutron stars, when two neutron stars come together, that should ring the universe enough that we should be able to see it if it happens close enough. So we have a good chance of that happening in the next couple of years. Well, so much of the history of this field has been opening up new wavelength ranges and therefore seeing new things. Unfortunately, the electromagnetic spectrum is now pretty much exploited. So if we're going to look at new wavelengths, we have to go to a whole new spectrum. So gravity waves might be that. So the really exciting thing will be if they discover something that isn't merging neutron stars. Absolutely, and you never know uh, what's out there until you look. Mm. Now, one thing I'm often asked when we talk about the violet universe is, are we in any danger? We talk we all these media stories about enormous explosions and incredible violence. So, are we doomed? What's it going to do to the Earth? Well, you know, there are many, many ways to die in our universe. It just turns out most of them are really unlikely. So, I think you know, there's just actually a paper that came out in the last few weeks looking at whether or not, uh, you know, why uh, life hasn't been destroyed by gamma ray bursts, for example. So there is a chance, probably about one in a billion per year, of a gamma ray burst lining up in our own galaxy and shining on us and irradiating, getting rid of our atmosphere and radiating the entire planet. Uh, that would be bad. But it's only, it's a very, very rare chance of it happening, and gamma ray bursts are becoming very rare in, modern, in the modern universe, so more than likely it's not going to happen. A nearby supernova? Well, Betelgeuse, uh, nearest by big star that's likely to explode in the near future, maybe 10,000 years, maybe tomorrow, it's so far away it'll never affect us. Sirius, very pretty, though. It will be, it'll be pretty and, exci and exciting. It'll be very bright. Sirius B, there's a white dwarf there right next to Sirius. We don't really understand how type 1a supernovae explode. We think they might come from that type of system. Not going to happen anytime soon, but in the next maybe billion years or so, Sirius B could explode. And Sirius B is only eight light years away. So if it were to explode right now, that turns out the amount of gamma rays it put out would be bad. It's almost like a gamma ray burst. The good news is a billion years from now, it won't be eight light years away. It'll be so far away, it won't matter. But, but maybe another something one, else might come Yeah, but close. another one could be close when it explodes. So unlikely, but not zero probability. 
yes, I guess it's a trade-off between the incredible violence of these things and the enormous distances. And that inverse square law means you move something 100 light years away, it has to be have absolutely enormous flux to do anything. Moving a thousand light years or 10,000 or 100,000 light years away and yeah, it doesn't gone. really matter how violent it is. It's not going to do very much to us. And the best, you know, the best thing we know is nothing's happened recently. It doesn't, it's whatever happens is going to be rare. And we know that every 100 million years or so, bad things happen to the Earth, usually comets hitting us. But, you know, the occasional uh, stellar cataclysm that we've discussed in this course is not beyond the realm of possibilities. But I wouldn't worry about it. A hundred million years is a really long time. Yeah, I'd say the biggest threats to life on Earth come from the life on Earth. Come from within, yes. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this course, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in our next course in the series, our course on cosmology.